Yes, today I'm going to come to you, and it's going to be titled, Tongue, the Tongue is a Fire. The Tongue is a Fire. I want you to understand about fire in this particular verse, you know. Fire is going to be a power, a source, something in that nature, a force. So the tongue is a fire. But I'm going to start you off in James. I'm going to go in James. I'm going to go over here to James 3. And I'm going to go to verse 2. So I want you to join me in James 3, verse 2. And it says, For in many things we offend all. In words, the same is perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. But you have to understand one thing, first of all. First, you got to understand what offend means in this particular verse right here. Offend means to stumble. A fan means to make mistakes. Fan means to sin. And you know, when you're dealing with sin, you're talking about ways where you can attack someone, where you can hinder someone, where you can cause displeasure for someone. You know? So we understand this. So I'm going to read this all over again, but I'm going to upgrade it the way that I read it. For it says, For in many things we stumble. So in many things, we stumble. And, you know, we're going to talk about the mouth a little bit. We're going to talk about the tongue. But with the, uh, and, and if any man make not a mistake or stumble not in words, that's with the tongue, that's with the mouth, the same is a perfect man. I mean, a good man, a complete man, you understand? And able also to bridle the whole body, to bridle. Bridle. They let the word bridle say control the whole body, to restrain the body, to get the body to follow. So therefore, your tongue leaves your body. What you speak a lot of times is what you do. So therefore, the tongue is a fire. Now let's go down here to um, uh, verse 5 and in verse 5 it says even so the tongue is a little member just a little part and boasts great things that means to brag that means to even speak falsely you know to even speak falsely to talk in vain so you know what you're speaking is a bunch of lies and deceptions then it says, Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindle. You know, how great a matter a little fire kindle. Unfortunate conditions or circumstances. That's what the matter with. That's what matter going to be here. A matter is a, uh, uh, an unfortunate condition or circumstance. And it's a little fire and it kindles. And that little fire is that tongue. That fire is that tongue that starts everything. Kindle to start, to ignite, to bring forth. That's what the tongue do. That's what that little fire do, that little tongue do. It starts stuff, you know. So it said, even so the tongue is a little member, it's a little part. And both great things, behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindle. So that tongue can start a lot of unfortunate circumstances unfortunate conditions it can get you in trouble let's make it plain and simple the tongue can get you in trouble it can kindle trouble for you it can continue problems for you that's what the tongue can do to you okay but well, let's go down to verse six and verse six tell you why i named it this title because it said and the tongue is a fire see and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a power, a source, a force. You know, that's what a fire do. A fire. A fire can purify or a fire can destroy. So this tongue is a fire. But right now, in this particular verse, it's about evil though. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, a world of wickedness. A world of unfairness, unjust. You know, that's what the tongue is. Uh, uh, the tongue 
is a world of iniquity, things that go against God. Wrong acts toward, toward people and God, you know? That's what the yeah. tongues do. So is the tongue among our members. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. What you say can defile your whole body. That's what it's saying. The tongue can defile your whole body. The tongue can mess your whole body up. So, remember that. And sets on fire the course of nature. And sets on fire a course of nature. And it, 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 and it starts a course for you. And it leads you into a course of nature. And that nature that it's leading you into is the nature of wickedness which is our sinful nature. So it's leading us into this wickedness nature and it sets on fire of hell, which leads to hell. So it sets a course of nature, the tongue do, that leads to hell. So your tongue can lead you to damnation. Basically that's what it's saying. What you speak, what you say, can destroy you. So therefore, if we have to get our mouth right, we have to learn to speak the right things so that our tongue don't lead us to hell. You know? But even down here in verse 8, I'm going to jump on down here to verse 8, then it says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. But I want to catch the first part of this though. But the tongue can no man tame. Can't no man tame that tongue. There's no way a man can tame the tongue. So that's why we go to Christ. So that we can receive the Holy Spirit. So we can have faith in the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that our tongue can be tamed. But it's not tamed through ourselves. It's tamed through the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. And the tongue become a order. And then as we renew ourselves in the word of God, we start speaking the word of God. See, once we renew our mind, and then we start speaking the word of God, and once we start speaking the word of God, and living by the word of God, and then guess what? Your tongue is being tamed to do the will of God, to speak the will of God, and when you speak the will of God, guess what? Then you act out the will of God. And when you act out the will of God, and then you're on your way to heaven. And then you're on your way to be with the Father. Because now your tongue has been tamed by the Holy Spirit, but not by you. You cannot tame your own tongue. It can only be done by the power of God. And that's it. And it has to be tamed because of what it consists of. Do you understand what it consists of? It consists of unruly evil. Unruly evil. Unlimited evil. Full of evil. That's what the term is. It's full of evil and deadly poison. Our tongue. It's full of evil and deadly poison. But by the grace of God and by what Jesus Christ did for us, that tongue don't have to be like that no more because we got a purifier and his name is Jesus. And Jesus can purify our tongue and get our tongue right through the power of the Holy Spirit. Once we accept Christ as our Savior and we develop ourselves in his ways and in his will by the studying and applying of his word in our life, by the renewing of our mind, by giving praise and looking to the Father, our speech change. Because when our speech change, our heart change. And when our heart change, our tongue changed because he had given us a new heart and therefore the, tan, the tongue becomes under subjection to the power of the Holy Spirit through the Father. That's the way it works. 
That's the only way you tame the tongue. If you want to quit cussing, you want to quit backbiting, you want to quit all that, then, then you got to go to Jesus. So you can have the Holy Spirit to tame your tongue to speak the right things, to say the right thing. And when you speak the right thing, that means you're thinking the right thing, that means you're going to do the right thing. But you got to go to the Father if you want to tame that tongue through His Son, Jesus Christ, to receive that precious Holy Spirit that will guide you and tame your tongue. But there's something else that goes on with this tongue in verse 9 that you got to understand that I hope you get. It says, Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse man, which are made after the similitude of God. After the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed as blessings and cursing. My brother, these things are not so be. These things are not so be. The, see, blessing and cursing shouldn't be coming out your mouth. You shouldn't be blessing God with your mouth and then turn around and cursing your brothers and sisters. And that means to be speaking evil of them, to speaking bad of them, to speaking evil. It ain't just to deal with profanity. We taking this cursing to another level because we taking it to God's level. Man's level cursing is just profanity, but God's, but God's level of cursing got to do with speaking evil. To speak bad, to put somebody down, and start to build them up with your words, to degrade them with your words. That's speaking evil of someone. That's cursing someone. To tell somebody they no good, that's cursing someone. You ain't got to use them choice words in order to curse someone. This is what you got to understand, and that's what we do with our tongue. We go here on Sunday, and we bless God. And we give him praise and we honor him. But as soon as you walk out the door, you're probably talking about somebody backbiting with your tongue. You understand? Even confront them in their face and telling them they ain't no good. They ain't about nothing. They ain't going to equal to nothing. Study cursing them with your tongue. That ain't the way it go. God don't play it like that. He said, that shouldn't be. That's what he said. He said that himself. And he said, James said, out of the same mouth proceed his blessings and cursing, my brother, these things are not to be. So you know what? You shouldn't be going around blessing somebody and then turn around cursing somebody. The way that it should be, you should be constantly blessing, 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 encouraging, lifting up, speaking in love. These are the things that I consider blessings, you know, to guide someone in the right path, you know, to, to, to encourage them to do the right thing, to talk them out of a, doing them sinful things that they once used to do. Bless with your tongue. Let a person know when they do a good job. Let that person know that you recognize them for who they are. Lift them up. Don't tear them down. That's what we're supposed to be. As Christians, we're supposed to be out here blessing people, encouraging people to do the right thing. Blessing them when they do something right and let them know that it's appreciated. Bless them by glorifying them a little bit about what they're doing so that they can feel good about themselves instead of cursing them and knocking them down. And when they do good, you say, oh, you could have did a little better than that. You know, that right there wasn't good enough. Oh, I don't appreciate that. That's what you call cursing. But instead, you can say, hey, you did a nice job. I appreciate what you've done, you know. And you let them know. So you can encourage them. So you can lift them up to make them want to do a better job. Tell them you're proud of the good things that they're doing in life, the righteous things that they're doing in life, the good things they're doing in life. You understand? You curse them. I mean, you bless them. You bless them. You don't curse them. You bless them. And you bless them with the good word of God. And you bless them with the good manners that God has given you. And with the respect that God has given you. With your mouth. With your mouth. With your mouth. With your mouth. And when you see someone doing evil, bless them. Bless them with your mouth by giving them Jesus Christ. Give them a blessing out of your mouth. Give them some hope 
out of your mouth. That is giving out blessings. Give them some strength that they can change out of your mouth. Encourage them to do the right thing. That's giving them blessings out of your mouth. And this is what the tongue is supposed to do if we're going to represent Jesus Christ. But right now I want you to go with me to Proverbs 18.21. Because in Proverbs 18, 21, as I get ready to go down into my closing, I want you to catch some about Proverbs 18, 21. And it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, the tongue is a fire. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, you can give someone life in the power of tongue, or you can take life away from the power in tongue. And I'm not even talking about the physical life. I'm talking about the spiritual life. You can give them a spiritual life in the power of the tongue and take them out of that death life that they live now. But death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can build somebody up, or you can tear somebody down. But the trick to it all, it's not even just for the other person. It's for you too. Death and life is in the power of the tongue for you. For what you tell yourself. If you tell yourself you're going to improve, you're going to improve because you're going to work on improving. If you tell yourself you're going to live in the righteousness of God, you're going to work on living in the righteousness of God. But if you tell yourself you don't care, and then you're killing yourself. Then you're destroying yourself. And then you're hurting yourself. And then you're putting yourself down. But death and life is in the power of a tongue or what you tell yourself as well. You have to understand that too. So the tongue is a fire. But now I want you to go with me to Romans 10. I want you to go with me to Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And this is in my closing, and catch this real quick. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I would advise you this time to make him the Lord of your life. Make him the Lord of your life. Turn your life over to him. Give him lordship. Give him lordship. Make him the Lord and Savior of your life. When you give him lordship, that's saying that you are willing to be his servant and allow him to be your master. And that means that you are willing to do things the way that he want them done. And the day is a good day for salvation. The day is a good day for deliverance. The day is a good day to come out that pit. The day is a good day to have your mouth tamed through the power of the Holy Spirit because the tongue is a fire. A fire do two things. It destroy and it purifies. If you look and check it out in the Word of God, the fire purifies and the fire can destroy. But I ask you to get the power, the fire of purification through the power of the Holy Spirit by making Jesus Christ from your Savior through your mouth, by your confession and with your heart believe. And that's all I got to say today. And I say if you don't know him again one more time, call upon him. But I say have a good day. My father's looking over for you, which is the heavenly father. And Jesus then took care of his business for you. So today, I don't want no one to perish. Come to the father. Check me out on YouTube <laughs> under Thomas Patterson. I'm there with some more videos. If you like me, check me out. And may God continue to bless you and help you in all that you do. I love you all.